The reality for most people living with Sjogren's is there is a constant battle with fatigue and pain, and the fear of triggering a flare is very real and valid. The advice we often get can be conflicting. One person will say, push through it, and another will say to just completely rest. And some well-meaning friends might say, just try yoga, or have you tried going for a walk? As if we haven't already thought of that or already tried it out. I remember standing in my kitchen one morning, looking at my running shoes by the door, shoes that I used to lace up without thinking and feeling this wave of grief mixed with fear. Would running make my back pain worse? Would I pay for it the next day with crushing fatigue and muscle soreness? And if I didn't try, was I just giving up on myself? This internal conflict is exhausting, isn't it? And it's made worse by the fact that many of us have had negative experiences with exercise or gyms in the past. Maybe you pushed yourself too hard and ended up in bed for three days or a week. Maybe a trainer told you to just power through and you felt invalidated. Or maybe you've simply avoided it altogether because the risk just felt too high. When researchers look at activity levels in patients with Sjogren's, they find a consistent pattern. Most patients are doing some walking, but almost no one is consistently doing strength or balance training. We're missing out on some of the most powerful tools for managing our symptoms, in part because often we're afraid they'll make us worse. So let's look at the evidence. And I want to be clear, I'm not here to tell you that exercise is a cure-all or that you just need to move more. I'm here to show you what the science actually says so that you can make an informed decision about your own body in, you know, a, in discussion with your healthcare team. Again, I am a doctor. I'm not your doctor. You need to talk about these things with your own team as well. Now, multiple supervised clinical trials have looked at resistance or strength training in Sjogren's patients. These aren't small, just anecdotal stories. These are controlled trials with real patients being monitored by healthcare professionals. And the results are incredibly encouraging. They found significant improvements in fatigue and pain. 